Hello, Internet. It's good to be back again. It's been quite a while since you've seen me because it's been quite a while since I've made a video. I probably will never make a video when I'm not wearing a hat because the first run that I did was without a hat and the years are not being kind to me, unfortunately. But I'm going to paint something. No, no, that's a lie. I'm not going to paint anything. I'm going to go over to the workbench behind me and I'm going to draw something just over my shoulder here where we see a bucket of pretzels. The pretzels are almost gone. It's almost empty. It was a lot of pretzels. And once they're gone, I'll probably use that container for something because I have a really hard time. I don't know about you guys, but I have a hard time throwing away containers. I always find something to put in there. Like, oh, I could put brushes in here. I can put whatever in there. Um, it's a problem. I should probably have that checked out. Maybe I should clear off my, my workspace here so that this looks a little bit more presentable. You invite people into the into your workspace and then you don't clean it. How rude. What I'm doing here with a kneaded eraser is just ghosting this these sketch lines here. And to fill you in on the project, this is a commission for a character from a video game that someone created. So, you know, one of those games where you can go on there and, and make up your own character and give them a backstory and then play the character in a multiplayer online situation. City of Heroes. Maybe you've heard of City of Heroes. It's quite a few years old. There was a City of Heroes and there was a City of Villains. Um, I think I played the City of Villains game a little. I think Maybe I played both of them, actually. It was back in the day when... I was doing a little bit more of that. I had one of my, my oldest was young at the time, and I was looking for for games that I didn't find annoying, that I found enjoyable that he could also play. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to give the client, I was thinking about this earlier, if someone commissions a piece of artwork from you, are they the commissionee? which makes the artist the commissioner. Mm -hmm. Something to think about. And that was probably dumb. Maybe I should edit that out. I mean, what fun would it be if you just sat here and watched me draw the entire time in silence? That would put you straight to sleep, I would imagine. So I've been pretty quiet when it comes to YouTube been doing things. I've been creating things. I've been working on things. I'm just looking for a different pencil while I'm doing this. But um, I haven't really put any... Well, I, I have made videos, but I not, not really for the purposes of sharing. I miss the, I miss the streaming. Um, sometimes I think I should get back into that, but uh, it... You know, it's a very, a lot, very time consuming to put aside, you know, that, that, that time when you can be doing something that you think is, is worthwhile because you want to provide some value to people. You don't want to just put videos out there into the ether just for your own uh, ego, I suppose. That's not going to do anybody any good. Because who cares? Just been caught up in the in the rat race. Oh, well, back to this character anyway. So this is a character from a game called City of Heroes. It is a multiplayer online game. The reference photo that I'm using is from a book, People in Poses. It's old. I don't even know if Impact is still a publisher. Uh, 2005, so maybe not as old as I thought, but I mean, that's pretty old. It's going on 20 years old, and I don't even like math, but I can figure that much out. Um, so what I'm doing here is 
creating this character, this pose, I'm, I'm referencing this pose. I'm going to change a lot of it because the features of the character will be different. The, the weapons will be different. The clothing will be different. A lot of stuff will be different. But if you want your work to have a believable quality to it, you probably probably want to be referencing thing. I mean, it's good to draw from imagination and to invent, but I think in the interest of time and accuracy and making sure that things kind of add up the way they're supposed to, you it's probably a smart idea to use reference. I don't know. There there's a debate about that. Like people say like, "Oh, is that's kind of cheating or that's you know, that's uh, taking shortcuts or can't you draw without having to look at something because you're just copying it. And there's lots of opinion out there. But when it comes down to the, uh, the facts or the reality is I have someone who has offered to pay me money to create a thing for them that they're going to enjoy and they're you know, they're going to be pleased with. I want to make sure that I give them their money's worth, so to speak. Um, so I want to make sure that there's nothing that they would look at it and, and go, well, that looks weird. Why why did you draw their arms like that? Or um, And actually an interesting conversation that I had with the person that commissioned this because they have some experience in the world of um, handling firearms, shooting, marksmanship, those types of things. And the initial pose that I had chosen was uh, not physically possible or was w- it was unlikely that someone would hold the weapons that way. And right away they spotted it and were, were like, no, that's, that's not going to work because a person that knows what they're doing would not hold weapons that way. Which was cool because, again, I don't have... I don't have the knowledge to uh to of everything to be able to know you know how everything should look so that's kind of a cool thing about drawing is when you when you're having to create stuff like this you get to you get to really look at a lot of different things a lot of different genres a lot of different um uh, subject matter so if I you know someone told me they wanted a a knight on horseback. I don't ride horses. I don't know what all of the equipment that you would need in terms of saddles and whatnot that would it would be feasible for a knight to be riding with. I'd have to look all that up. I'd have to reference all of it. And the client would have to be involved in that to some extent. If it was a personal commission and they were, you know, they knew a lot about horses, let's just say they were a rider. Uh, they would look at some of the stuff that I would do and go, man, what do you, what is that? That doesn't make any sense. That's not even physically possible. A horse doesn't look like that. It doesn't move like that. The rider would fall off and, you know, in battle or whatever, wouldn't be able to handle a wet. So there's just a lot of stuff and you're never going to know all the stuff. Um, it is kind of fun sometimes to do something where you just, you don't know it because you get to learn something new. Um, and it also sometimes is fun to do something that you do know because, well, you do know it. And if you're already interested in it and you already have some knowledge of it, that's kind of cool too. I'll take some liberties with this in terms of the pose and the anatomy, um, making the model a little bit taller than the one in the photograph, I think. Um, I kind of already roughly measured it out. Uh, I want to try to give it a little bit more, um, a little bit more of a dynamic look. So just kind of like leaning, maybe I'll, I'll maybe kick the hip out a little bit more on one side. Just give it a little more attitude. And I'm sketching things in. I'm almost trying to find the lines that I want to use. You saw like the first portion was where I ghosted out some of the some of the pose and now I'm I'm dialing it in a bit more. 
again, taking some of those. I'm simplifying the anatomy. Um, another important concept when you're doing something like this is um, you you want to have a reference as as almost like a guide, but you want to put your own put your own spin on it, put your own style on it, or else you know what would be the point of having a drawing made if you were just copying a photograph. At that point, it would be like, well, why don't we just dress somebody up like this character and take a photograph of them if we wanted that sort of uh, that sort of straightforward finish to it. Hopefully that makes sense. Sometimes I'm drawing and I'm making these calculations and I'm comparing things and doing these these kind of measurements and making sure everything lines up and I just start rambling about nonsense. Or I don't talk at all because who's going to ramble about nonsense when they're sitting in a room by themselves drawing? So I might be, I, I'm, I usually have like some sort of like noise in the background, music, TV, you know what I mean? Music or TV. I liked when I was streaming, I would have headphones on so I'd be able to hear the music that was in the background. But that also would drive me a little bit crazy because I would be talking, almost talking over the music. It was kind of weird. So maybe I'll put some audio, some background audio over the top of this when I edit it before I post it. Or maybe I won't. I probably will. I probably will. Royalty free, of course. Copyright free. It's no fun. I've made that mistake before. One time I actually put classical music in the background of a stream or of a YouTube video or something. And I got a copyright strike. And I was like, wait a minute. The person who wrote that song has been dead for at least 100 years. Why would I get a copyright strike? Doesn't matter. Somebody somebody said this. You're not going to be putting Mozart in the background, my friend. Unless you're paying the Mozarts. Or something. I don't know. Maybe that's not even how it went down. But I definitely learned a lesson. Note to self. Can't even use classical music. Figure that would be like uh, what do they call it? Um, public domain, yeah, public domain. When something is something gets to a point where the all the licensing and copyrights have expired, and it's just okay for everyone to use that. Anyway, what I'm trying to do here is go from. These little lines that I'm making here, by the way, before I get into that, um, is just sort of like to almost like feel the form, like how how would the form be kind of bend? How would it turn? Turning around the form, right? So making these lines, these cross contour lines, sort of is my way of, if I was sculpting out, it'd be sort of like folding over those curves. But here I'm drawing over them to kind of, get the volume the volume is important to me i think some of these lines got a little bit heavy i get a little bit heavy handed when i'm drawing um you know i'm talking i'm drawing i'm looking i'm thinking this is something that i've done for a long time but it, it just never really i mean you can only get so good at it you sort of your focus kind of fades from one thing to the next but the point I was trying to make before was, as you're drawing this, you want to not really get hung up on details. You want to go from really general to more specific, um, really vague to more detailed. And you're really just after the shapes and the volumes and the gesture and the contour and the cross contour. Uh-oh. The camera went off. Damn it. I don't know. It doesn't matter. That's all the time I had for today's video anyway. Anywho, 
I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Hopefully I'll have all this fixed by then. Yeesh. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. Like, there's like a little button that they put on the laptop or something, and then they say click it, and then you can never even miss a video. Hmm. That's if you subscribe.